Planet Zoo is missing something, and I'm here to bring this topic a little more attention. Hey y'all, it's Old Country, and welcome back into another video. Today I want to talk about something I and some others have just noticed recently about Planet Zoo. This is in no way supposed to harm or go after Frontier or anyone working on Planet Zoo, but this is more of a wish list and some constructive feedback from myself and others in the community on something I feel that has been a little lacking this year, and that's enrichment. But before we get into today's video, remember to go follow me over on Instagram at OldCountryYT. We post daily over there, have fun stories and interactions. We do polls and questions, and it's just a real great old fun time. So make sure you go follow me over there. And also make sure to check out my Old Country Clips channel, where I post YouTube shorts and soon shorter clips for my main channel. We are almost at 100 subscribers over there. So go make sure to subscribe and grow that channel as well. Thank you and enjoy this video. Now, in terms of enrichment items, I don't think to anyone's surprise that this year has been a little lacking, but it makes sense. With conservation adding in CM Mang brachiation and Twilight receiving the bats with new walkthrough exhibits, it's clear their time has been well spent and the community, including myself, is very pleased with the amazing content we have received. This video is not about complaining about current enrichment items, but more of a, well, hopefully a starting point for a potential shift in terms of future enrichment and animal behaviors. This is a topic I haven't really seen anyone talk about recently, but it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. This is a shift I really hope Frontier makes in the future of this game. I think enrichment is being criminally overlooked in this game by the community. I get it, we want things like birds, new habitat animals, fish, and marine animals. Animals should always be first, which is why it's surprising we don't have dedicated forum threads going into the 50s, 60s, 100s, talking about what animals can we receive and how we can enrich their lives in our own zoos. I mean, isn't that the point of keeping animals in zoos in the first place? Conservation? With animal conservation comes proper animal welfare, which I would argue the biggest proponent of welfare is enrichment. Making animals display natural behaviors, you know, get those mammals some good old dopamine releases. I think the thing with enrichment up to this point is we have seen a bunch of toys. Obviously zoos use things like boxes, chew toys, and sprinklers. But there is a whole nother avenue that I think needs to be explored a lot more. Natural enrichment enrichment that displays more natural behaviors. One of the best additions to this game in its whole life cycle has been the addition of burrows. Perfect new sleeping quarters for animals that sleep underground. But what about animals that live in trees? Is their fate really to sleep on the ground the rest of their lives? Hopefully after this video, the answer will be no. I know this has probably been brought up somewhere before, but I just want to give some of my takes on this. I think we need to see things like sleeping trees for arboreal animals natural enrichment that mimics where an arboreal animal would sleep in the wild. I'm pretty sure Zoo Tycoon had a leopard tree where the leopard would actually display its iconic sleeping behavior. But what about sleeping trees for koalas or binturongs? Have you ever seen a clouded leopard sleep on the ground in a zoo? Or is it sleeping in a tree with its arms hanging off a log sound asleep? This doesn't even have to stop it being just natural. Just in general, arboreal species have been criminally shafted in terms of game enrichment. How about seeing things like hanging baskets, boxes, sleeping hammocks, or smaller hammocks because we technically have a hammock for the sun bear, or fake branches for sleeping in or on top of. It's no mystery that climbing has had its fair share of issues, but in recent updates it seemed to have been getting better and better. With the addition of the new climbing frame and the conservation pack update, I thought that would be a turning point in this game for arboreal species getting more love, and sadly it was not. With Twilight, we had only received the pumpkin ball enrichment. Normally, at least the headliner species would get its own unique enrichment, but like I said earlier, I think it's clear the answer to why it didn't in this case is because of the walkthrough exhibits and the new bat rigs and flying that comes with that. Now, what do I see in terms of the future potential for arboreal species enrichment items? Sadly, I think the answer is very unclear. On one hand, I think we have a chunk of the community, including myself, 
think the next DLC will, an update will focus on adding in aviary birds to the game. Some others believe they will continue the climate pack trend and we will receive a mountain pack animal for the winter DLC. But what I don't see happening is getting a bunch of new enrichment items to better help our arboreal species out. But before I give my proposal on something I would like to see in the future to potentially fix this issue, I want to touch on some other subjects related to this current issue. Let's talk about more realistic enrichment items in general. I want to hop on over to the forums for this one. There is a good thread for free updates that slightly touches on this dilemma. This was created by Bearcat. For this part, we are only going to touch on the enrichment ideas part. The one that sticks out to me the most is the idea of adding in broken or leafless trees as enrichment items. Things for animals to interact with, whether they sleep in it, climb around it, or play in it, the idea of adding in natural items like dead trees that provide animals with the opportunity to display more natural behaviors is something I think the game desperately needs right now. Also, to add in some more suggestions related to this point, I think things like leaf piles for animals to jump in, or a pile of sticks for animals to chew on, or maybe something like a dead log for an animal to climb on or lay down on. You know the really cool enrichment item where the alpine ibex climbs a mountain? How about something along those lines for other animals? A preset combination of rocks or a rock wall for more animals to climb around on and display these more natural behaviors. And with this point, I wrap back around to the subject of we need sleeping enrichment items like the burrows. I see the burrows as literally the tip of the iceberg. If they can trigger certain animals to use a burrow to sleep in and give birth in, then they can for sure do this with other items. Let's go over some items I consider to be similar and also crucial. As I said before, for animals like the Binturon, Koala, and Red Panda, we need trees, smaller hammocks, sleeping boxes, nets, dead trees, and branches. But what about ground-dwelling animals? Do cats like to sleep up high, or do they like to sleep down low? If you provide the cat with the option to be up high, they will take that advantage. Lions constantly sleep on rocks up high and soak in that sun. But this isn't limited to just lions. Many animals utilize rocks to sleep. My suggestion is adding in rocks that are designed to trigger an animal to climb up on and sleep on. Also on the same note, trees that provide shade. If an animal needs to cool down during a hot day to rest, there can be a shady tree enrichment that triggers the animal to sleep in or under. This makes me think of something a lot of zoos do nowadays. Zoos use these modern styles of shades, not only for animals, but for guests as well. Fellow YouTuber Lighter has made some really cool custom versions of these shades, but these only act as implied as they are built with in-game scenery pieces. Something I suggest is that if by any chance Frontier is listening to this, take some of these things the community has built and add similar pieces or enrichment items so it can be of actual use to guests and animals and also reduce our peace count. Trust me, if y'all added these shades into the game, I'm sure Lighter wouldn't mind it at all. Totally seamless transition here into my next point that is related to this one. Lighter, as many know, is basically a creative genius when it comes to making these implied custom enrichments. So let's take a look into his custom feeding stations, which leads me into the next topic. More variation for feeding stations. I know this video is about expanding enrichment items and adding in more natural options to display these more natural behaviors, but I think the variation of feeders can also benefit this topic and the in-game animals. Lighter has created a multitude of variations for herbivore animals. With his custom feeder set, workshop link in the description, this set includes amazing custom feeding stations in games such as new standing feeders, wall feeders, hanging feeders, and backstage feeders. These are ranging from wooden troughs used for herbivores to hanging feeders used for taller animals like giraffes and elephants to replicate eating patterns in the wild. Also backstage feeders that allow keepers to give animals backstage access to food and water readily. The sad part is none of these are actually usable. That makes me a sad panda. This isn't Lighter's issue though. He's only doing the best he can do. I mean, he's basically doing God's work out here. But what I'm suggesting is Frontier takes these or similar ideas to these and adds a new variation to the basic and bland repetitive feeders currently in game. And it gives us some new and realistic options to provide our animals with food and water. 
We got some really cool and well-deserved backstage items with the conservation pack, but let's expand this idea. What about adding in a feeder option to fences to allow us to attach feeders and water troughs to fences to give us a little more of a realistic experience with our backstage areas for animals? We have the option to attach climb-proof barriers to the tops of fences, so why not feeding and water stations as well? And on this subject, we circle back to the idea of where we started enrichment items. What's a big thing zoos do to their animals to enrich their lives and keep their minds sharp? Target training. Let's watch this clip here to get a better idea. So Cully's getting chunks of herring today and blocks of lard, two of his diet items and two that he really enjoys. We like to use positive reinforcement training here at the St. Louis Zoo. And that means that when uh, he does the behavior that we ask him to do, he gets reinforced, to, so he gets a treat, the lard and the fish. Uh, so today we were working on target, and basically just means that he touches his nose to the end of a target stick, and that helps us to build on other behaviors. It can get us to help him move where we need him to go if we're training him for a veterinary procedure or something like that. The other behavior we worked on today was lay down. Basically it's asking him to lay down on his belly with his paws out flat and again all of these behaviors just help us to take better care of him they help him to participate in his care um, if the veterinarians need to examine a part of his body so he'll show us his paws he'll open his mouth stand up on his hind legs and show off his belly not only do I suggest the option of adding feeding stations to in-game barriers but also adding enrichment items like target training and this brings me into our final subject, keeper animal interaction enrichment. Some animals love to see their keepers and it's no question keepers love to see and bond with their animals. If you watch shows like The Zoo and Secrets of the Zoo, you will have a pretty good idea of what I'm about to talk about. Keepers will do things like take their animals for a walk, use toys to make animals like cats like cheetahs run or servals run, hose down and brush animals like rhinos and elephants, and like I stated earlier, target train and practice with animals to enrich their lives. Another cool thing keepers will do is add bubbles into the animal pools for them to splash around in or hide food and other items for animals to find and watch how quickly they find these things. What I'm trying to get at here is that there are so many ways to enrich animals and what we have in game is barely scratching the surface of enrichment and feeding our animals or animal sleeping potentials. We have lots of cool toys but I want to see Planet Zoo take a little bit more of a realistic route and natural approach going forward. One of the best and most loved features of the free updates was the ability for animals to sniff things. Just something that small can add a huge level of realism and depth into our in-game animals. So what is my solution? Well, besides the fact of Frontier adding in these things with future DLCs, I want to take a look at something Planet Coaster did. Construction kits. These smaller packs released for $2.99 and gave the Planet Coaster community a small pack of content that had a very specific theme and a few items that tied to that theme. Like the Knight Rider construction kit that gave players some new scenery pieces, new FX, and also a new sign. This is something that can work in Planet Zoo as well. For example, enrichment items. Imagine the Arboreal Animal Enrichment Kit, providing some new enrichment items like a sleeping basket and new climbing trees as well as some related pieces like dead branches and basket scenery pieces. Also maybe getting a little creative and adding in some new education signs for arboreal animals, explaining why they need trees to survive and how we can prevent things like the palm oil industry. Not only do we provide our animals with new enrichment, but also bring attention to a very serious subject. But that's only one example. Many others could include the rock sleeping kit, or backstage enrichment kit, or food and water trough variations kits. The possibilities could potentially be endless with these smaller and more niche packs that could fill in the empty holes that I think are in desperate need of filling. I truly think enrichment, feeding, and sleeping items are the most overlooked and most needed items in the game right now. Getting new animals is always a pleasure, but also giving our animals enrichment and other options to live more natural lifestyles and even more so enrich their lives is a big thing I think the game is missing and overlooking. 
So with all of this being said, these are just my ideas, and I'm sure y'all have some ideas I missed here as well. I urge y'all to drop them in the comments below and tell me what are some things you like to see to better enrich our animals' lives in game. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Huge shout out to Lighter for the amazing workshop items. And also, hey, Planet Zoo and Frontier, if y'all are listening, this isn't supposed to be a list of demands or me criticizing the game by any sort of the word. This is just my humble opinion on something I consider to be the most overlooked feature in game and something I think could desperately use attention. Thanks y'all for watching. It's been Old Country, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Have a good one, y'all.